Hi, this is Joe Satriani, and you're listening to David Brody. Hey, what's up? It's David Brody from Elvis Duran in the Morning Zoo. Here's part three of three of my interview with Joe Satriani. In this part, I talked to him about his wife, the new album, and his tour of guitar centers around the country. You know, you mentioned your first album, Not of This Earth, which is a great album that I hope a lot of people will go back and get that don't make the mistake of thinking surfing was your first. There's a song on the album, Rubina, which is named after your wife. Yeah. yeah. And I know there's a song on the new album, Come On Baby, which you wrote for your wife. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I listened to a little part of it on your website, and it's, it's really nice. And, and I keep thinking, I hope your wife appreciates that she has a husband that can write amazing instrumental music for her. All I can do is buy my wife flowers. <laughs> But that's cool, too. That's got to be a great gift that you have. You know, happy anniversary, honey. Uh, here's your song. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for being able to have that relationship. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Life is precious, and uh, when, when you have uh, love like that, it's, it's, uh, it makes it all worth living, you know. It certainly does. Now, Joe, we talked about the, the new album, Come On Baby, is on it. I'm going to try to get the title right, so, so wish me luck. Professor Sa- Satcha Funkulus <laughs> right. and uh, Mysterion of Rock. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, well, I'll edit that. It'll sound much better when I edit it. <laughs> now, it's a, it's a strange title. I know it's based on some of the songs on the album. That's right. Yeah. Every one of your albums is a little bit different, a little more experimental. What can a Joe Satriani fan expect on this album that's going to make him say, wow, that's, I like where he went with that? Wow. Well, I got to say the the album is uh, as as you pointed out, it's, it's eclectic. You know, there are lots of different things that I explore on the record, and that, which is why the title wound up uh, being not one song. It's the the title of the record is a, is a mix up of a bunch of different uh, titles um, that that we were trying to figure out because we didn't want to mislead the listener out there into thinking the album was just funky or just experimental or just lyrical and 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 sweet sounding. So. Yeah, the record's got some stuff that's uh, very hard hitting and straightforward. Uh, it's got some songs like the last two record, the last two songs on the record, or make up about 15 minutes of crazy jamming. Uh, and uh, but there are some things in there that are bluesy and funky and very lyrical. And uh, others are really hit you over the head. Like I just want to rock is is pretty much, uh, you know, a, sort of what we call a bonehead rock or something that we really like to do when we hit the stage. So. I wanted to make sure that the album contained a lot of different uh, sort of avenues or departures or whatever you want, places to lift off of and have fun, you know. And, of course, there's guitar playing that sounds like it's you know six or seven different players, which is something I, I always like to explore. I learned that from growing up with Hendrix Records. That's, that's how Jimmy used to make his records, uh, you know, filled with what seemed like different guitar players, but it was always just him, you know. Well, I can't wait for the album. There's, uh, there's also a deluxe edition with a DVD. That's right. Uh, it's a thousand copies of it, limited edition. You know, I I haven't uh, gotten the official number from Sony yet, and okay. I think that uh, they're gonna they're gonna play that week by week. Um, uh, but yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, um, uh, it it may be as high as ten thousand or something like that. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, I'm gonna say a thousand so people run out and get it for you. Okay. <laughs> you know, this way they feel the pressure to get it. And there's there's one question I didn't ask you. Was we're talking about the Grammys, and then I want to talk about the Guitar Center sessions you're doing. Sure. You were nominated with Steve Vai for the for the Grammy, and I figured, okay, which one of these guys is gonna win it? Was it gonna ruin the friendship? And then they give it to Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> I mean, ever since they gave the Heavy Metal Award to Jethro Tull, I haven't really respected their decision-making. <laughs> but were you a little surprised that of all the people that won it, it was him? I was. I was, you know, uh, I had communicated with Steve right after that, you know, that I, I was dead certain that Steve was going to win it, you know, because it was quite a feat, uh, that uh, that record that he put out, you know, the, the blending of his type of playing with an orchestra. I mean, it was really quite an accomplishment. Uh, that record, and so I didn't even think about the other guys. I just thought, no, everyone there at the Naris Academy, whatever, they're just gonna they're gonna recognize that Steve really did something unique. And so, you know, part of me was just thinking, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna happen. Steve's gonna get it. And then all of a sudden, it went to Bruce, and I thought, oh, that's right. This is the you know this is the Jethro Tull Milli Vanilli moment all over again. Right, right. Because Springsteen needs the accolades and the Grammys and and yeah. some exposure for once. I... Yeah. So, but at the same time, it's like you know, it's they they don't really mean anything. I mean, they they the the giving of the awards are very important to the Grammys themselves and to the television event, and that's that's what it's really all about. And um, but the but you know, uh, I mean. 
Bruce doesn't care about that. I mean, no, but you and Steve would have, I think. I, I don't. I don't know. No, I mean, you have to ask okay. Steve about that. He's already got one. Yeah. Well, let me rephrase. Your fans and Steve's fans might have cared. Yeah, uh, maybe so. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel bad that if there are you know my fans out there who are rooting for me, I don't want them to feel bad about it. So I, I always, you know, play it down. And uh, uh, but you know, uh, whatever. You know, right. I'm, well, Always With Me, Always With You is a special song to me. It's the song I first played for my wife when I met her in 89 when I wanted to introduce it instrumental music. And it is the first song I play on every new CD player, MP3 player, car radio. Wow. Uh, it's sort of a tradition. I just love the song. And so I wanted it to win a Grammy because, you know, 20 years ago it didn't win anything. Right. And here was another chance for that song to win. So I'm glad that you're not broken up about it. So we'll just say it's me. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Joe, I do want to talk about Guitar Center for a second. We talked about your lessons going anywhere from $340 to $20,000. For the person who can't afford your lessons or isn't lucky enough to be Kirk Hammett, um, Guitar Center is doing a great thing where fans can come and interact with you and kind of learn some things. Uh, tell me about what's going to be going on if someone comes down. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to let me uh, jump up on a little stage and play my guitar, you know, just uh, arm's length away from, from a crowd. Uh, and I'm going to play for about 30 minutes. I'll run through, you know, basically greatest hits, some new songs, uh, talk to uh, the audience about, you know, some of the work that goes into making the, uh, the, the parts come alive on the guitar and the, and the gear. You know, I'm doing it in Guitar Center, so it's very gear-centric, you know. Uh, and we're talking about technique, and then uh, I'll, I'll take questions from the audience, and they can you know ask me anything about how things are done, put together, um, and then I'll sit down and I'll sign autographs uh, for as many people that line up for it. So usually they give us about an hour or two to uh, to do that, and we're, we're doing this all you know this is all sponsored by Ibanez and, and Guitar Center, which is great. So uh, we get to. Uh, travel through uh, the U.S. I think we're doing like 11 of them in a row. Yep, and that's all on your website, satriani.com. It's also on guitarcenter.com. That's right, yeah. And uh, and that that's going to be a great thing for, for someone who wants to get up close and watch you in a, sa in a similar setting that I did 20 years ago in, in a nice small club. In fact, uh, one last story, and then I'm, I'm going to let you go, Joe. I, okay. I sat next to Paul Stanley at one of your bottom line shows. Oh, wow. He had an unbelievable blonde on his arm, and he was going to go backstage to meet you for the first time. And I said, did you enjoy the show, Paul? And he said, if I could play like him, I wouldn't need the other guys in Kiss. Oh. <laughs> well, Paul's a great guy. A great he is. Guy. Uh, and uh, I don't know if he took any guitar lessons from you while he was there, but he can <laughs> afford it. Um, Joe, I, I really, I, I think I gave you the impression that, that I, you know, I didn't just pick up your last album. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really have enjoyed your career. I'm looking forward to another 20 albums. I'm looking forward to you coming to the area. I'll come see you. Uh, this this really is, for me, Joe, the highlight of my radio career. Thank oh, wow. you. Um, thank you so much for, t for taking the time and, and talking with me. It's a great interview. Well, I appreciate that, Joe. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I'm going to try it again. Professor Satchafunkalus and the Mysterian of Rock. Perfect. Sell a million records, Joe, at least. Okay. Have fun on the tour. I'll see you when you come back to the area. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, Joe. Bye-bye. Wow. That was awesome. Joe Satriani. And that wraps up part three of my Joe Satriani interview. If you didn't hear the first two parts, please search for them on the Brody blog and Satriani. I'm David Brody from Elvis Duran in the Morning Zoo. My email address is zoobrody at gmail.com. Let me know what you thought of the interview. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll pick up his new CD. I'm not even going to try to say the name of the CD again. The Brody blog is property of Clear Channel Communications and may not be rebroadcast in any medium.